everybody welcome back to the channel I'm out here at the Albany Pioneer Days show Albany Minnesota and as you can see it's quite foggy behind me that's because it's very early on Sunday morning and this is when I get out to do my walk arounds before people also get out and about and basically get in my way so um, I've been kicking around here for a couple days and I found this probably my favorite piece of old iron here this year this is an old case road roller you can see the big case logo up there on the radiator we also have a case makers badge size 10 ton number 53002 JI case threshing machine company so this is not an aftermarket makers roller that used someone else's tractor as a power plant case actually made this and it is quite rare I've never seen one before lots of iron in it it's the old cross motor design just like the old tractors of the day just walk around here there's a little bit of a information tag on the back this is a 2545 case road roller this roller is the second one built out of only 25 by the case company around 1925 it's all original and it was originally used in New York State so a quick break in the action just for reference purposes this is what a standard case 2545 cross motor tractor looked like this is the main design right here and this is the tractor that they decided to build that road roller off of exact same cross motor engine same radiator same drivetrain although you can see the chassis is a lot shorter and we have tractor wheels instead of road roller wheels but for reference purposes that's what the standard tractor version of that road roller looks like We'll do a quick walk around on it though, see how close I can get to it next to this gravel pile. First thing of course you notice is the heavy, heavy iron and these flat wheels. I mean that is just the spokes alone are just substantial. Great big center cap on it. Not sure what these pins are. I think what they are is you could uh, flip them around uh, and make them into lugs if you need a traction. They're all around. Otherwise, if you turn them the way they are, I'm pretty sure it gives you your flat surface on the wheel. The old cross motor design. Pipe goes up the top, through the rough, through the canopy, I should say. This looks like some kind of a pre cleaner or air filter up here. Plums down to the carburetor. Like all the old wires have the wood insulation around them yet, keep them from shorting out. Here's kind of an interesting deal. Most all of these were hand cranked. The crank would pivot right here and it would engage these, these lugs to turn this thing over to start it. But this actually has an electric starter on there. And I've never seen an electric start set up on one of these cross motors. Granted, I don't know a ton about them, but it doesn't look like anything that anybody cobbled in either because the casting is all integral to this front cover. Comes out, provides a mounting for the nose cone. Another rather factory looking bracket here. It's got to be an original setup for this. I noticed the ring gear is quite chewed in this area. Like the engine likes to stop in this, this area right here. That's where it always come out and engage. Chain drum steering. You can see it winds around the uh, pulley on this side. Comes up anchors to your, uh, your wishbone. Holds the front roller. The old riveted construction and the square headed fasteners. The cobwebs are showing up just perfectly in the morning dew. <laughs> Here we have, looks like a smaller tank. Three way valve on it, it's in off right now, but you have gas to this side, kerosene to that side. Starts on gas, switches over to kerosene, pretty common for the day. Fan shroud comes back off the radiator. Grease cups for lubrication everywhere. You'd fill these up and then just give it a little bit of a turn from time to time and that would push the grease from the cup and through the tube. Send it on its way to its final destination. Again, quite common for the day. More of these square headed fasteners up here. Just love it. It's awesome. Again, heavy, heavy wishbone surrounding that roller. Weight is your friend. That was the whole point of this. 
show you something over here again. I noticed we have this sprocket that has no chain, but this sprocket would have driven, driven this sprocket, which is attached to a small air compressor. So what we need air for on this? Well, I believe it's for this rear ripping attachment back here. This looks like it's a pneumatic cylinder. It would provide your lift that comes down basically to your, your toolbar, your crossbar at the back that has all the shanks on it. Looks like it's got a travel catch that's engaged right now to make sure it holds up. All catches attached to that this little rod with this little handle on the top. Ripping shanks just bolt in. They don't, they're not retained by the more typical, more modern wedge design. Big check wheels on it. That one don't turn. That one doesn't really turn either. It's probably been a while. They all pivot on this forward bar. And again, heavy cast brackets lead back to each, each shank. Pretty neat. Just walk this side real quick. Again with the heavy cast wheels, large spokes. This wheel has the same little pucks in there. I'm sure those are for flipping around to give you traction if you need it. I'm thinking scrapers would have attached to these uh, bars right here. There's nothing there right now. Again, you got chain steer on this side, winds around the drum. bit of a friction break here main clutch I like the belt to their oiler <laughs> it looks like a screen door spring again with the uh, wooden insulators for the plug wires just looking at the other side of this compressor this is a Brunner manufacturing company can't really tell where it's made. It's from USA though. It looks like we have the uh, slats for the shutters on the radiator. If you're burning kerosene or lower grade fuels, a lot of times you block off the radiator to keep the heat up. Typical Eagle on the globe, GI case manufacturing company. It looks awesome. The old canopy up top. See if we can trespass a little bit here, shall we? Get up the operator's platform. Got a pedal down there. I'm not even going to guess what it does. I've never driven one. Look at this old case gauge. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera. It still reads case. Looks like that was your air pressure gauge. Needle stuck at 250 right now, and I'm pretty sure that that's not accurate. <laughs> Oil pressure gauge there. So we have an amp gauge there. I like how they put the steel uh, slats in front of them. Oh, I see that can fold down as well. Kind of like the old explosion proof uh, light bulbs back in the day. Shield them off a little bit. I suppose they intended for this to be a rather uh, harsh environment. This lever here with the release at the top ratchet mechanism there again not sure we're just looking a couple of levers here I think these were maybe throttle I'm pretty sure one was timing on these old things gear shifter so we have three positions possibly four we got three for sure crank knob on the old wheel right now we got one revolution and just about two and I can see that chain start to move up there. So steering response would not be nimble, but it worked. And all you see ahead of you is engine. Awesome. Let's see if we can get down before we get yelled at. Anyway, that is the Case Road Roller. This thing is awesome. I say probably my favorite piece at the show this year she isn't shiny but she's pretty boy I'd like to have one like that 
Thanks for watching, everybody.